Hi everyone. Okay, so I already started this recording twice. The first time I was like, hi everybody, happy almost end of March. And then I realized that I do feel like I always do this thing where I'm like, happy Friday or happy first day of April or whatever. So then I stopped. And then on the second attempt, I was like, hi everybody. So, so far so good on this third attempt. Um, it's a Friday morning. I'm super excited to talk to you all about my March reading outside of the podcast and outside of school. Before I do that, I of course wanna say thank you so much to all of you for your continued support for SSR. I'm just loving the Patreon community so much in 2021. I'm so glad um, that I made the choice to like kind of lean in a little bit more. If I'm being honest, I feel like I was like slacking on the Patreon thing a little bit in 2020. And I'm glad that I decided to step up my game because I'm having so much fun getting to know all of you a little bit more and also creating different kinds of content for you. So thank you so much. I'm gonna keep the good stuff coming. And um, yeah, I just wanna say thank you for your continued support. Hold on, I have to clean my glasses for a second because I just did my makeup. And I don't know if you, um, people who wear glasses, like I thought that I cleaned my glasses after I put makeup on and now I feel like there's more makeup. You know what I'm talking about, hold on. Please hold. <laughs> okay, we're back. Also, shout out to Julia who's watching because last time I wore my glasses in one of these videos, they did not fit me properly because I got them from Warby Parker and they were like falling off and I kept having to adjust them and Julia was kind enough to um, recommend that I just bring them in for free to an optometrist somewhere. So thank you, Julia. Okay, let me just show you the book stack that we're working with today. It's a good stack, right? Um, I, on the whole, feel like okay about my March reading. I started off really strong. I was having a ton of fun with like personal reading. And then as the month has gone on, not so much. Lots of assignments for school in the mix right now. Um, I think I've mentioned this elsewhere, but my MFA program this semester feels a lot more like academic, whereas last semester I felt more creative. So last semester I was doing almost exclusively, well, entirely exclusively um, like creative writing work because I was taking a flash, a flash fiction class. Um, so that's all just like really short pieces of fiction. My workshop, which was like longer short stories and then my screenwriting class. And then I was doing scripts. This semester um, I am taking workshops, so that's short stories. But then I'm also taking a sociology class which has like academic papers and then a special topics class in auto fiction, which while it does have a few like creative writing elements, is also requiring like a more academic kind of like work cited style paper at the end of the semester. So drowning in a little bit of that, drowning in a lot of heavy reading um, for reference, in case anybody was wondering, I'm reading this book right now for my sociology class, which um, I mean, look at that. Doesn't that look so fun? No. Um, so yeah, I'm just, I have a lot of other reading. So all that to say, I was doing a lot of fun reading early in the month of March and then over the last couple of weeks, it's drifted. But I still wanna share what I've read with you, of course. And I'll start with Twice Shy. Um, I had mentioned this book to you in my last video recap because I started it on my Kindle um, at the end of February, but I finished it at the beginning of March. And I really knew nothing about it when I started talking about it to you in my last video. So let me fill you in a little bit more. Um, the book is about a woman named Maybelle who works in this like indoor water park, kind of like tacky motel hotel kind of situation. And she finds out that she has inherited um, this like estate from her aunt. And she has these like amazing memories of living on the estate um, for summers when she was a kid. I think she actually lived there for a longer period than that. Her mom um, was dealing with a lot of stuff when, she, when Maybelle was growing up. So Maybelle was kind of like, transported from one family member to the next and this estate that her aunt lived on was like her favorite place so she's like great i'm gonna quit my job i'm gonna go back to this estate and everything will fall into place um but when she gets there she finds out that her aunt has also left the estate in part to a man named wesley i had to be reminded of his last name from the back of the book um reminded of his first name uh wesley has also inherited the estate wesley is like a caretaker he um works outside he like helps maybell's aunt with a lot of the tasks around the house and she also like wasn't doing very well at the end of her life and so he was there to like take care of her so they have this not surprisingly um like unexpected love story um 
And there are a couple things that I really liked about the book. I think Wesley is an interesting kind of uh, romantic lead. I don't think we tend to get a lot of male romantic leads like Wesley. He struggles with anxiety. Um, he kind of puts out this super like aggro vibe, but like when Mabel gets to know him, he's much more complicated than that. He deals with a lot of demons, which I think all too often we don't see in romantic comedies with male leads. Um, so I thought that was really interesting. I loved the settings. I loved this idea that they're like fixing up this house together. And Maybell has all these ideas about like how she wants to use the estate and she also is forced to like contend with the truth of her own childhood memories or the lack thereof. Um, one thing I would say I didn't love so much was like for me Maybell kind of walked the fine line of being like quirky and annoying and like enthusiastic and annoying. I don't know about you but for me that's a very fine line. Um, for you she might fall on a different side of that line for me. I would say there were a lot of moments in this book where she fell on the wrong side. That being said, this is a really fun read. Um, little sneak peek. I'm actually having the author Sarah Hogel on the podcast. I think she'll be on in two or three weeks once this episode drops. And I'll be giving away a couple of copies of this book. So if this sounds interesting, uh, stay tuned for that giveaway on Instagram. Also, isn't this cover cute? I think it's really fun. And I like the color. It's an SSR yellow, actually, now that I think about it. Next up, I'm going to share with you this book that I borrowed from my friend probably three or four years ago um, and have hauled from like one apartment to the next. Finally got around to reading it. She recommended that I read it as like a fun summer read when she gave it to me three or four years ago. And I do think that it's really well suited for summer, although I did enjoy it in the colder part of the spring. It takes place, as you might be able to guess from the cover, in a beach town. Um, it actually takes place near a town called Greenport in New York, um, near the Hamptons, which is, Matt and I like randomly spent a weekend in Greenport in 2019. We decided that we were gonna like spontaneously go for a weekend in January and it was freezing cold um, and there was like nothing going on, but it was this really quaint town. We loved it. We had such a nice weekend. We've thought about going back many times since. So it was fun to see um, the, these different towns in the North Fork area portrayed in this book. Um, the book covers the life of a couple of different families in this area. Um, the main character's name is Ruthie and she basically owns this house um, in the North Fork that she lives in for most of the year, but she rents it out in the summertime, um, which is kind of a bummer because it's like this beautiful house and she doesn't get to enjoy it in the summer when it's actually like beautiful there and kind of when it's meant to be enjoyed. She rents her house out to um, this sort of like socialite. I believe she might be an actress. She used to be married to an artist and um, some drama ensues when Ruthie's ex-husband develops an interest in this woman. There's also a lot of drama going on at Ruthie's job. She's been the director of a local art museum for many years and the board kind of decides that they're not so thrilled with what she's doing, um, which is crappy because Ruthie's great. Um, and there's like lots of different threads going on with like other people who live in the town who are interested in art or, or who are artists. Um, there's people visiting for the summer. There's like your locals who are there year round. So there's that interesting dynamic of like people who actually live in the town and how they're interacting with the people who just come in for a couple of months in the summer. Um, there's some romances going on between them. And then of course there's Ruthie who's like kind of trying to find her, her own um, voice and her own place after many years of being married and after many years of being defined by this particular job that she's had, she's trying to figure out what to do about her house, about her teenage daughter. Generally, I really enjoyed it. This is out in paperback now. Um, my friend bought it in hardcover when it came out years ago, but there is a paperback. I'll make sure to link the paperback in the notes below this video. And yeah, I would absolutely pick up a copy for the summer. Um, I think it's a great summer read. Next, let's talk about the mall. I mentioned this in the Patreon party last week. I don't even know when we had it at the beginning of this week. Um, this was a letdown for me. But before I talk about why it was a letdown, can we just talk about like this cover? It actually looks, as I'm looking at it <laughs> in the reflection of the video, it looks like real neon. So I have to hand it to the cover designers on this book. I think it's really well done. I don't know how you could walk past this book in a bookstore and not want a copy of it. 
I had been running about I had been wanting a copy of it for a really long time. For those who don't know, Megan McCafferty is the author of the Jessica Darling series. Um, those books were really big in the aughts when I was a teenager. We've covered one of them on the podcast, episode five or episode seven, I believe. The book is called Sloppy Firsts. And Megan McCafferty has been sort of on the quiet side since those books came out. And so it was a really big deal when she announced that she was writing them all. Um, it takes place in the 90s in a shopping mall in New Jersey, in Pineville, New Jersey, which is the same fictional town that Jessica Darling inhabits in the Jessica Darling series. And it's cool because you kind of get like, there's a few overlapping characters, although we don't get to know them very much. It's kind of fun that like those characters are mentioned. Like Jessica Darling's sister, Bethany, is sort of like a secondary or tertiary character in this book. Tertiary. Good word, Al. Um... And I was really into the book at the beginning. It is YA, so I'll, I'll note that up front. Um, I was really into it at the beginning because we meet this main character. I always have to reference the names of the characters because I'm just doing so much reading. The main character is Cassie. Um, we meet her as she's returning to her job at America's Best Cookie in the Food Court at her local mall. And um, the mall is like the nerve center of everything that happens in her community and with her friends. Pretty much all of her friends either work at the mall or at the boardwalk because they live near the Jersey Shore. And um, Cassie is really looking forward to getting out of Pineville. She's been accepted to Columbia University in the fall. So she's really just like counting the days until she can go. And when we meet her, she's returning to that job in the food court after being out for the count for a few weeks with Mono, which sucks. Um, and she's really excited because she's going to see her boyfriend again. Her boyfriend also works at America's Best Cookie. They have these big plans to go to New York for college together. But when she gets to work, she finds out, and this is not a big spoiler because you find out in the first couple of pages, um, that Cassie's boyfriend, Troy, I believe is his name, um, has been cheating on her with another mall employee. So all of her plans for the summer, even some of her plans for the future feel like they're kind of up in the air. She obviously can't continue working at America's Best Cookie with her horrible ex, duh. So she goes and gets a job at a sort of like luxury upscale women's boutique in the mall. She reconnects with an old friend of hers named Drea who works at this store with her mom. Um, her mom Gia actually owns it and Cassie starts keeping the books for them in the back. They don't really have an accountant and Cassie's super smart so um, while she's not glamorous enough to actually sell clothes to the women in the front of the store, she goes to the back and is like getting their accounts in order. I loved all of that. I thought that was really fun. I love this idea of like the politics of the mall and how everybody in the mall like has a role to play and there's all this drama. Um, we do get a chance to meet like the different teenagers who work at various locations in the mall and all of that was really fun. But then for me, it took a weird turn when we find out that Drea um, is aware of this sort of like scavenger hunt, treasure hunt um, that is like buried like throughout the mall. Um, I don't know. I just like wasn't that into it. Others might be, sorry if you can hear her barking. Um, I just didn't dig that part of it. So throughout the rest of the book, you're kind of like seeing Drea and Cassie on the treasure hunt throughout the mall. They think there's some big fortune at the end of it. And also like snapshots of Cassie dealing with some other things in her life, um, some issues at home, some ongoing issues with her ex-boyfriend, a crush with, um, or a crush on a boy who works at Sam Goody, which was a fun flashback. So I think there were like a lot of elements that were really fun for me. I felt like there was a lot of untapped potential in the mall setting. Um, it made me want to try to write a story or a book set in a mall because I feel like there's even more that could be done. And I don't know, I just felt like the treasure hunt portion of it sort of like pigeonholed it in a weird way. But again, others might enjoy that. For me, a little bit of a letdown. Sorry. Okay, um, China Rich Girlfriend. I am sadly like not as far into this book as I would have liked. Here's a little update for you. Um, so far, I'm really enjoying it. I've been wanting to read it for a long time. It's the second book in the Crazy Rich Asian series. I haven't read Crazy, bleh, I haven't read Crazy Rich Asians in a few years, but I don't feel like I need to go back and read it right away. I'm picking up kind of right where it leaves off in this book. Um, look how cool the foil on that cover is. I love it. Um, so far, like, I don't even know that I can put it, put my finger on what it's about. We're being introduced to a couple of different characters. Um, so far I'm remembering Edison from the first book, Araminta from the first book, um, Astrid from the first book, but I, I'm not quite sure yet, like, who's gonna take center stage. Um, I think Rachel Chu, who was Nick Young's girlfriend in the first book and in the movie, which I love, 
is also going to play a big role in this, but she hasn't really um, made a big entrance yet in this book. So I probably will have more to say about this in the April recap video. My hope is that I can like curl up with this book at some point in the next couple of weeks and just like really get into it. I feel like a book like this deserves that. Um, and I'm enjoying it, but I just don't have much to say quite yet. Now we have to do a Ducks new report update. I'm, I'm approaching the halfway point, which is really exciting. Okay, so this is, I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting confused. So this is the beginning and this is the end. So I'm almost at the halfway point. Um, by the end of next month, I will definitely have surpassed the halfway point. I've started reading five pages every night instead of 10. At the beginning, I was reading 10 pages a night and it just recently has been too much. So I'm doing five pages a night and really enjoying that. Um, the word that I would use to describe the reading experience right now, and I don't know if this is a word that I've used to talk about Ducks and Newberry Port in the past, is meditative. Um, can you hear the trucks outside? I would say that this is meditative because it's just like words, words, words. It's very calming. Um, and every once in a while I'm brought back to like, oh right, I'm I'm reading a book. I'm in this woman's head. I'm experiencing a day in her life. I'm still not entirely sure what like the point of the book is. I don't know if there necessarily is one. Maybe I will find out later. Maybe I won't. Maybe it's just meant to be like a beautiful language. But right now it just feels meditative and I'm enjoying it. So um I don't know. I think originally I had done the math and if I was reading 10 pages a night, I would be done by June. Maybe that was five pages a night. I think I'll probably be done by the end of summer. Um, maybe once grad school, once the semester is finished, I'll be able to read longer chunks at night. But I like no longer feel like I need to rush through it because I'm just enjoying it and it's kind of a relaxing way to end my days. I usually read the five pages of this book and then I pick up my other fun books. So lately I've been doing like five pages of Ducks Newburyport and then reading China Rich Girlfriend until I fall asleep. So that is my March reading recap. I um, I'm trying to <laughs> do a better job of like summarizing the books for you and then sharing some of my thoughts. If you would like me to approach this in a different way in future videos, please let me know in the comments below or shoot me a DM over on Instagram. I hope that you um, feel inspired to pick up some of them or maybe to take them off your TBR if you didn't love what I had to say. I will include links to all of them um, below, all bookshop.org links, which as you probably know are affiliate links for SSR, but shopping through those links does not cost you any more money. It actually um, is the exact same cost and it just allows you to support SSR as you shop. And because you're shopping through bookshop.org, you're also supporting independent bookstores. So I've been trying to buy a lot of my books through bookshop.org lately. Um, and if you have any questions about these books, please feel free to let me know. Um, I'd love to talk about them more if you have specific questions and I will chat with you soon. Happy reading.